Good day viewers, I am Olaju Dabdozak, instructor for this topic, Molecular Properties and Forces, Addition and Question. Um, today we will be looking at the above topic which is Molecular Properties and Forces. Before we look at that, we have content. We have matter, we are going to look at what matter is, molecular structure state of matter binding forces between molecules before we start i want us to know that any time we are dealing with molecular properties and forces any time we are dealing with molecular properties and forces there is no way we are not going to touch molecules and matters so now in the first instance we're going to look at the structure of matter. What is matter? And all those structures that make up a matter. So now, matter is made up of tiny basic unit of structure, which is called an atom. Matter is made up of tiny basic unit fundamental unit of structure called atoms we're going to look at all these structures that build up to to become matter part of them is atom an element we have compounds mass molecules and so on and so forth we will be looking at each definitions of all these structures. Atoms are neither divided, created, nor destroyed during a physical or chemical change. That is, any time you have a chemical change, either physical or chemical change, we can never create an atom. We can never divide it and we cannot even destroy an atom. So what is an element? An element is made up of its own kind of atom. That is, in every element, we have kind of atom in it, which is different from the atoms of other elements. So element, atom of each element varies from each other. So what is a compound? Compounds are composed of atoms, of two or more elements. So anytime we have atoms of two or more elements joined together in definite proportions, so that's when we're going to have a compound. The mass is the amount of matter in an object. The mass is, an, is the amount of matter in an object. So, the molecule now is the smallest particle of a substance, such as water, that can still be identified as that substance. That molecule is the smallest particle of a substance, such as water, that can still be identified as that substance. There is no way we'll be looking at molecular properties without looking at physical and chemical properties of matter. So, whenever we're talking about physical properties, is the characteristic of matter that can be observed using any of our senses. When we're talking about senses, you know, the sense of seeing, the sense of touching, like hardness, Density, melting point, boiling point, and so on and so forth. They are the physical properties of matter. What we can see, what we can touch, what our senses can tell us that this is what we're talking about. So, are the physical properties. Also, we have chemical properties of matter. To explain the chemical properties, we're going to describe how one kind of matter behaves 
in the presence of another kind of matter. What we're talking about here is whenever we have a mixture of two different matters, definitely we look at how one behaves in the presence of another. So that simply explains chemical properties of matter. An example is when we have vinegar and baking soda. So the two are two different matters. So whenever they come together, there will be reaction. So that is when we said we have chemical reaction. Whenever vinegar is added to baking soda, what they produce is CO2. What they produce is CO2, which is carbon dioxide. So now we've seen what physical and chemical properties of matter is. There's another thing I would like us to look at is aeon. So what is an aeon? An aeon is an atom or molecule in which the total number of electrons so when the total number of electrons is not equal to the total number of protons, giving the atom a net positive or negative electrical charge, so that's when we have an ion. So also when we, if a neutral atom loses one or more electrons, it has a net positive charge and is known as cation. So when an atom gains electrons, it has a, ne a net negative charge, and that's when we have an ion. In a simple term, positive charge electrons are known as cation, and negatively charged electrons are known as anion. So don't forget, we have cation, we have anion. Now, let's look at state of matter. There are three states of matter. But before we look at that, water is one of the most common substances on our planet, which is the heart. As we travel all over the world, it is found in the form of solid. You can find water in the form of solid, liquid, and in gaseous state of phases. So, anytime we move on to polar regions on the top of high mountains, we found ice, which is in solid state. The rainwater is an example of the liquid state. So, when you have water vapor or gas, which exists in the air, so we have it in form of gaseous state. So, pool, pools of water on the ground after rain gradually disappear. They evaporate slowly. Water vapor or steam is produced when a kettle boils. We can try to practicalize this. Let's try to get a kettle of water, put it on fire. The moment the thing boils, we're going to see vapor that in form of gaseous state. So we can see a solid or a liquid. Gas cannot be seen because something like air cannot be seen, but it can be felt. We recognize that present whenever leaves on trees are seen moving. When we see trees and uh, the leaves on the trees moving, so we, re we recognize that that is the presence of air. So, when we're talking about state of matter, matter has three states I've mentioned. We have the solid, we have the liquid, we have the gas. And we, they have definite shape and definite volume. So when we're talking about individual states, we're going to look at their shape and their volume. We have solid, solid as both definite shape and definite volume. Liquid only has a definite volume, doesn't have definite shape. L L uh, gas has none 
definite shape or definite volume. So we're going to look at that. But for let me let me explain what um all these things means. All matter that is that is anything that has weight is found in solid. Anything that has weight is found in liquid or in gaseous state. So we have some differences between the states. That is the solid state, the liquid state, and the gaseous state. So for the solid states, they always have the same volume. Solid will have the same volume. Solid cannot be poured. They have the same shape. For the liquid, they have the same volume. They can be poured. They take the, sa the same shape as the container vessel. That's for the liquid. And for the gases, they have the same volume as their container. The container will tell us the volume of gas. They can be poured. And they have no shape. So if you look at this diagram, we're going to see for each container, it portrays the state of the matter that it has. For the solid, we can see they are in form of cube. For the liquid, we can see it is in form of water. And for the gas, also, you can see they have bubbles. They have bubbles. So each state of matter define the shape and the volume it carries. So that's for the solid, they have definite shape and definite volume. For the liquid, they have indefinite shape and they have definite volume. For the gas, it has indefinite shape and indefinite volume. So now Solid and gas, they are word and opposite because solid has definite shape, why gas has indefinite shape. So the interchange is really liquid that doesn't have indefinite shape, but it has definite volume. So that's under the state of matter. Also, let's look at binding forces between molecules. In order for molecules to exist in aggregates, that is in gas, in liquid and solid, there's something we call intermolecular forces. And that intermolecular forces must exist between them. So an understanding of intermolecular forces is very important in the study of science and follows logically from a detailed discussion of intramolecular bonding energies. But for the sake of a um, class, so in advanced physics, all these things have various uses in every sector, even in pharmacy. So now, the word cohesion or the attraction of like molecules, addition or the attraction of unlike molecules. So. Cohesion is all about attraction of the similar molecules, while adhesion is all about attraction of unlike molecules. All these things are manifestation of intermolecular forces. So that is, anytime we are dealing with intermolecular forces, we are going to be dealing with cohesion and attraction, which are very paramount in this topic. So now let's look at binding forces between molecules. We have four types of binding forces between molecules. They are we have repulsive and attractive attractive forces, van der Waal forces, ion dipole and ion induced dipole forces, and the fourth one is hydrogen bond. So. By God's ways, we'll be looking at all these binding forces between molecules, one after the other. 
Now, repulsive and attract, attractive forces. Whenever we have interaction between molecules, both for both repulsive and attractive attractive forces operate. I repeat, whenever there is interaction between molecules, both repulsive and attractive forces will operate. That's point number one. Number two, as two molecules are brought close together, the opposite charges in the two molecules are closer together than the like charges and cause the molecules to attract one another. That's no, number two. Number three, when the molecules are brought so close that the outer charge clouds touch, the molecules repel each other like rigid elastic bodies. Four, thus, Attractive forces are necessary in order that the molecules do not interpenetrate and annihilate one another. For the repulsive, which is the last, is due to the interpretation of the electronic clouds of molecules and increase exponentially with a decrease in distance between the molecules. We're going to be looking at all these things, and God's willing, I'll present real life applications and real life events of all these repulsive uh, binding forces between molecules. That we're going to see the real life of these things. Now, let's look at summary of what we thought. Matter, as I've said, is anything that has mass and takes up space. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. An atom is the smallest possible amount of matter, which still retains its identity as a chemical element. Element is one of the simplest chemical substances that cannot be decomposed in a chemical reaction. Molecule is the smallest particle of a specific element or compound that retains the chemical properties of that element or compound. And don't forget I said we have three states of matter, the solid, liquid, and gas. Binding forces between molecules are four. Repulsive and attractive forces Van der Waal forces, ion dipole and ion induced dipole forces, and the fourth one is hydrogen bond. We also look at cohesion and adhesion, in which I said cohesion is the attraction of like molecules, while adhesion is attraction of unlike molecules. All these things occur from the manifestations of intermolecular forces. So Let's look at exercise. Let's try to differentiate between the three states of matter. And I want you to solve it. By the next class, let's try to go through all this. And we're going to continue from the next class. And please, for all your inquiries, don't forget to send inquiries and answers to jimosmith at edufost.ng if you like this video please like and 